This afternoon, the president announced an investigation into how the WHO, the World Health Organization, has responded to the COVID-19 pandemic. Thanks for joining us for King 5 News at 5. I'm Mark Wright. And I'm Steve Bunin. Glad to be with you, Mark, once again. And until that investigation is complete, the WHO will not receive any funds from the United States. The WHO's attack on travel restrictions put political correctness above life-saving measures. The president claims that the WHO mishandled the situation and wasn't transparent about what was happening with the outbreak. So while parks and trails are shut down locally here in Washington state, the state says people are ignoring road closed signs and cases of vandalism are on the rise. But as King 5's Drew Mickelson found out, the state can't do that much to enforce the rules. You know, the recreation is a French word, meaning to recreate yourself. And so denying that opportunity for people to recreate themselves is tough. It is tough. In the 100,000 acre Capitol Forest, Phil Wolf can understand why folks would think this is the ultimate place for social distancing. Yeah, okay, you know, we're on the trail, we're, we're a little ways apart perhaps, but then we all go to the top and what? We're all standing next to each other at the viewpoint. All state public lands, forests, parks, trails have been closed as part of the stay home order but they're still being used as shooting ranges and campsites. Folks are ignoring the closures and blockades, and in some cases, destroying them, ramming them, and cutting down fence posts. Yeah, we're getting worse and worse and worse compliance. And vandalism is on the rise. You know, stay home, uh, uh, save uh, lives is a key message. Here. As a recreation manager, Phil Wolf is in charge of maintenance, but lately he's been doing enforcement of the closures but very limited enforcement. We're not making a point of writing citations. We're making the point of uh, telling people to be safe or in, in a safe manner. Shouldn't we start writing some tickets though? I mean, this is... You know, I mean, people need to do the right thing. Wolf doesn't carry a weapon, so he says reminding someone about the closure is a lot less confrontational than reprimanding someone. The state does say, though, that if they catch those vandals, those folks will be prosecuted. We have to sacrifice a few weeks to make sure that we stay healthy for the years of recreation that we can have, right? He's pleading with the public to be patient. He knows they're frustrated and want to get out here but says the public lands will still be here when this is all over. Drew Mickelson, King 5 News. As we all spend more time at home, authorities want to make sure you know there is help if your situation at home is a dangerous one. Bellevue Police posting on Facebook today that they've seen a 14% increase in domestic disturbance calls. If you are at home with an abuser, you can call LifeWire anytime for help. That number is 1-800-827-8840. Some developing news that impacts workers at Seattle-based Alaska Airlines. The federal government is handing out billions of dollars in bailout money to all of the major airlines. So what does that mean for those who work at Alaska? King 5's aviation specialist Glenn Farley has a look. Of course, it's Boeing here in Everett and also in Renton that builds a lot of those airliners that go to these airlines. This is all part of a $25 billion rescue package for the carriers basically to pay the salaries of airline workers between now and September 30th. So who are the airlines on that list that are participating? According to the Department of Treasury, this includes Alaska, American, Delta, United, JetBlue, Southwest Airlines, Frontier, Allegiant, Hawaiian, and SkyWest. A separate package is also being negotiated with smaller carriers as well around the country. Now, there has been some tough negotiations we're hearing. We don't know all the details yet. The Treasury Department has yet to announce those, but basically it would be a 70-30 split. 70% 70 that each airline would get in grants, 30% now in loans that could potentially even give the government a stock option to the stock in a lot of these carriers. In Everett, Glenn Farley, King 5 News. Boeing is reporting more 737 MAX cancellations, a lot more. The company lost 150 orders last month, more than 300 since the beginning of this year. The highest surge in order cancellation in decades. 
Boeing has been hit hard by the fallout of two deadly MAX crashes and a steep drop in travel demand. Just a year ago, the company was aiming to ramp up production to meet demand. It's now seeking federal relief funds. Well, it may seem like forever, but it's been just over three weeks since Washington's stay-at-home order went into effect. But if you're thinking, well, I could start just seeing one friend, King 5's Kristen Ayers spoke to UW researchers and found out you probably shouldn't. The website is aptly named, What's the Harm in Visiting Just One Friend? UW anthropology professor Steve Goodrow says the idea for it came from a conversation with a college friend about his son Jonah. He was saying that his, his son Jonah, you know, really wanted to go see one friend and, and wouldn't it be okay? So Goodrow and his fellow epidemiologist Martina Morris set out to illustrate what could happen if we all visited just one friend. They started with a model of human interactions before social distancing. The green dots are humans. The gray lines, they're many interactions. So here's what it looks like when we're all social distancing, with only the blue dots, essential workers, interacting. But let's say we break some social distancing rules and all visit just one friend. The effect, Goodrow and Morris say, would look like this, with a ripple effect of connectivity far beyond your social circle. So it doesn't just increase it a little bit, it multiplies it by 14 times over. And you can see that when you look at the pictures, it just strikes you very clearly. The effect, transmissions go up, and all of that leads to lots of additional deaths, just so people can hang out with one friend. Goodrow and Morris say it shows how even ordinary interactions can trigger extraordinary viral spread. There's a threshold, basically, where all of a sudden Almost everybody is connected. And it's this low-level linking that we're talking about, this just one friend. An important message at a time when people are getting increasingly antsy about staying indoors and may be tempted to relax social distancing. You know, at this, at this juncture, just not worth it. Not worth it. Not yet. No. Their takeaway, stick with social distancing for now and do not have anyone who doesn't live with you inside your house, even if it's just one friend. Kristen Ayers, King 5 News. To find out more about the research and take a closer look at the numbers yourself, you can text the word FRIEND to us at 206-448-4545. Mark. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 outbreak, getting medical protective gear to frontline workers has been a huge challenge. But a number of people and foundations have been quietly working to get those supplies to our state government, to hospitals, and to frontline responders. A foundation today called Guardians of the Angelus delivered 50,000 masks to UW Medicine in Seattle, just part of a much larger effort. Medical workers were the first to find out just how unprepared we were for a viral pandemic. But we're slowly catching up, thanks in part to donations like the one today at UW Medicine. Our medical center is just so grateful. Cindy Sayer is chief nursing officer. That's her with Liam Lee. He's with the foundation that secured the masks. This donation just allows us to have enough supplies so that we're not scared and worried uh, that we're going to run out um, and it just makes sure that we can take safe care of patients and protect the safety of all of our staff at the same time. There's an interesting backstory to how these masks made their way from China to Seattle. Liam works for a Seattle investment firm. Its founder, Lee Lu, started Guardians of the Angeles Foundation with 1.5 million of his own money. With the help of others, that fund is now 4.4 million and putting masks where they're needed most, for free. Uh, gradually purchased over right now is 1.2 million masks, KN95s and surgical level three. And we already actually distribute the, more than half of them to the hot spots like uh, New York City, Boston, and uh, Los Angeles, California, and now here in the uh, Washington. Just extremely grateful. All of this made possible because of their connection to Chinese electric vehicle company BYD, which quickly built a production facility that's now turning out 15 million masks a day. In business, they say who you know is one key to success. Turns out that's true when you're fighting a pandemic, too. The basic virtue of our human being, I guess, is just to help each other. You know, we, we are in this together. And the uh, only way to get out is, is stay together. 
The Guardians of the Angeles Foundation also connected the state of Washington to sources in China so the state could purchase millions of masks for use here at home in the state of Washington. So Guardians of the Angeles Foundation connecting a lot of people for good in this trying time.